been a while. Thank you very much, Nancy. Good morning, viewers. Now let's get started with the visit, Theresa May's visit. She's come, she's gone. She's yeah. in Kenya right now. As a trade professional, how do you analyze that? She had a meeting with President Buhari yesterday, bordering on security, bordering on economy, before she also moved to Lagos. Calibrate your thoughts for me. Yeah, well, my thinking is um, proactive leaders all over the world, they see themselves as uh, chief marketing officers. And uh, just like it was during the uh, pre-colonial era, the leader of uh, the British parliament, of the British people came to Nigeria. She didn't come to say hello. She came to open opportunities for British trade industry and investment and services um, sectors, especially in view of the possible implications, devastating impl implications of Brexit, that they are really not sure what it means to them. And of course, in order to actually concretize the fact that her visit had a purpose, she came with a high-powered delegation of British captains of industry in sectors that they had pre-studied to ensure that Nigeria, I mean, this will uh, be a, a hot sell in Nigeria. And that's why it's easy to make the kinds of promises and commitments that uh, she made as to contributing, in fact, being specific about the number of jobs that they were targeting to create in Nigeria. Imagine the British Prime Minister coming to tell you specifically, and they mean it, because it's actually a uh, study-based uh, um, pro pronouncement to tell you that they are going to create 100,000 jobs, just like Obama could say with all assurance that America was going to create 5 million jobs between 2010 and 2014. So this is using and they statistics. It. They did. Mm. Uh, actually, they achieved yeah. that by 2012. So in two years, they, they did. did it. The same thing Trump is doing, yeah. creating the jobs. You see that the numbers that come out every Friday, uh, you see that Americans are having jobs now, as it were. But the quality yeah. of jobs and also quality of wages is something to be debated about. But isn't it also interesting, just like you said, that this is a leader, Theresa May, that when she was in South Africa, she did say that Nigeria is home to the poorest people. In the, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. On earth. Yes, because <laughs> diplomacy, sorry I'm not a diplomat, but I think uh, diplomacy has, a, what do you call it, a... a an objective, uh, sorry, subjective, subjective there with an objective. So that objective could be self-serving. So it has a self-serving interest. And you got to understand the, um, it's just like the registers of language. You have to understand the audience you are talking to at a particular time, and therefore choose the kinds of analogies, vocabulary, and illustrations that will suit that audience. Of course, who doesn't know that Nigeria and South Africa are the claimants to the throne of economic giant of Africa? So wouldn't it make sweet music to tell one that, oh, don't worry, I may be going to the, the, uh, those guys, uh, but um, you and I understand that the, their poverty level is actually nothing to... You understand? Yes, but That's the, 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 the issue also the is when I watched her in South Africa, when I also listened to her, she said even her visits to these three African countries, which I also thought was very strategic, and I said on the show, I think on Tuesday, that yes, she visited South Africa, she's visited Nigeria, now she's in Kenya currently, that these are economies in Africa, as it were. South Africa, the most advanced economy yes. on the African continent, Nigeria, the largest economy, but I always say, you being bigger or larger does not mean you are healthy, yeah. <laughs> as it were. You know, then Kenya is the largest economy in um, East, Africa. East Africa. So they are actually very strategic. She also came with a delegation of businesses. And I, like I must said. say, Small businesses in the UK, yeah. not the likes of the Dangotes, because if you see uh, the Nigerian delegation going to other countries, they go with like the Dangotes, the big guys here in Nigeria. But she also came with her mid businesses. And I'm wondering, what exactly is that? What I am wondering is how you got into my brain 
to understand the kinds of <laughs> things that have been troubling me. I don't me have a crystal since ball. Since I got uh, the call from uh, Christy asking me to be here today, I'm worried. I'm worried because we don't seem to be learning. I'm worried because we don't seem, okay, yes, um, Femi Boye days of this world and the uh, advocates and trade experts in Nigeria and economic uh, stakeholders have been concerned that Nigeria's outward trade missions or missions, let's say Nigeria's outward missions first and foremost, do not have a private sector component. But at the second level, let's assume government has been listening to us and now when Mr. President is going somewhere, you see there is an, uh, there is a, uh, what do you call it, a business forum is being organized by side, side, by, side, side. by side. Who yeah. are the people who feature? It's, like you said, the Dangotes, the Tony Elumelus, the Jim Which were also there in Lagos yesterday to, to oh, okay, salute her and to at greet her. At what point, who, when are we going to have the Nigerian economy that has as hub the Nigerian micro, small and medium enterprises? And what they can offer Theresa the UK, May for example. was in Lagos. She told the Lagos state government uh, Britain was going to contribute 740 million pounds to export financing in Lagos. That sends quite a very deep, deep message to somebody like me. It means that Nigerian banks have been discovered. There's a conclusion in a study, I'm sure a study was conducted, that threw up the challenge of export financing in Nigeria. The 750 million uh, pounds, pounds that uh, you, uh, um, the UK wants to put on ground as export financing in Lagos State is almost 10 times the capitalization of Nigeria's export import bank. Do you understand that, Nancy? Yes, I do. It means that we are gradually approaching the line of a second col colonization, wherein it is economic the colonization. Economic colonization, <laughs> wherein it is the British money that is going to fund Nigeria's exports. And I'm afraid, right from now, I haven't done any study on this, it's just my personal opinion. I'm afraid that when the uh, British money is being used to finance Nigeria's exports, the ultimate beneficiary will be British industry and- And there are a lot of British industries. In Nigeria. Yeah. That's, what, that's in my fear right now. And I belong to a platform, Nigeria Export, um, Trade Experts Forum, where we have actually been disturbed by the implications of little, little, they, they appear little, but they have very, very high uh, uh, impact implications but it's also for Nigeria. It's also important to note that she also mentioned this in South Africa. I actually read between the lines that her visits to Africa, those three countries, would not necessarily be a fundamental shift from UK's interest, that she's still going to portray UK interest, the UK first. In actual fact, she was, I mean, she is being diplomatic. She has no business here, if not to come and uh, pursue UK interests. But, but, but the, question, yes, the question also would be, how much of this will be enough for the UK to Ghana? Perhaps this is a question I will pose to the UK High Commission, for the UK to Ghana post-Brexit, because if you take a look at even now the UK is trying to forge partnerships or stronger partnerships with other partners here in Africa. And is already signing UK-specific agreements. I read two days ago about Ghana signing a 20 yes. million pound kind yeah, of Ghana agreement. Yeah, Ghana Beyond Aid. Which yes. is, yeah, stuff like that. But that's where um, I've always been concerned, that our authorities are too Aluta-oriented. What do you mean by that? Aluta, I don't want. We know go gree or we know go gree. They are not uh, staying in their own designing rooms to package waiting I want. I don't want EPA. But the truth is that the European Union bloc accounted for 37.9% of Nigeria's total exports last year. And those are the people that we are fighting against. Now there is a single market on the continent of Africa. We are still, we no go agree, we no go agree. And Africa is marching on. That's what I mean by Aluta mentality. Until we leave the Aluta mentality, until 
we have, for example, in the presidency, a unit whose main sole objective, sole um, mandate is identifying the opportunities for Nigeria in Mr. President's visit to any country. I don't care whether it is Botswana, Cape Verde, or the United States of America, such that when there is such a visit, and years ahead, or sorry, months ahead, the small players, indigenous Nigeria SMEs, have been identified that form the component of Mr. President. In 2005, when President Obasanjo was going to visit France, the late um, Ambassador Ashiru, Minister of Foreign Affairs, he was the PAMSEC Planning Potentiary Minister of Foreign Affairs. He called upon me with due modesty. I organized the business component of President uh, Obasanjo's official visit to France in 2005. I didn't have a Unilever as m a member of Nigerian delegation. It was the small, small, small that were picked from the priority sectors that Obasanjo that wanted to pursue. Wanted to pursue. Okay, now That's with what, kind you, of now with what you said, now what was the feedback? What was the what was the resultant effect from that visit to those small businesses that you uh, that you told to accompany President Obasanjo? You know, they came back better equipped. They came back with uh, how do I put it? Expressions of interest to buy from Nigeria, and therefore they came back and became strengthened because they were now producing, manufacturing, farming for a specific market. Purpose. And that's what I call an export market-driven um, economy, now let's which look, we can achieve. Let's look at Markel's visit tomorrow yes. to Nigeria. I think it's more of migration that she would be talking about because we've seen so many Nigerians migrating to European countries, going through Libya, and dying in the sea, in the sea. and all of that. How, do, how, how, how what, what do you think her visit would help us get at the end of uh, tomorrow? Like you said, probably expand. Maybe it will be more like an emotional thing, more like appeal to our sentiments, and hopefully uh, open the eyes of our government to the need to create opportunities right here in Nigeria, because they are myriads of them. I want to believe that something I said on this program about two years ago, this is the time. In fact, this is the best time for it to come to fruition. Make Niger turn Nigeria into an industrial outpost. If you were able to turn Nigeria into an industrial outpost, Germany's concern, I must say, with due respect to their love for Nigeria, is not about um, developing Nigeria um, per se. It's about preventing Many the Nigerians ultimate coming uh, danger that will come mm. of a Nigerian influx into Germany. That's so, what it's all about. So Markel will actually be saying, let's develop our country, country. so that in a diplomatic way. In a diplomatic way. Let's develop our country so that we'll have less of migration. That is what I think. Illegal migration and people dying at the sea. Because it's giving them a hell of a time. Right there, you're seeing Germany is at loggerheads. Italy to the same Italy. thing. Yes, Spain. Spain. You know, These are, yeah. uh, France. Yes. Ultimately, even the United Kingdom. And these are also these political are issues very, in their country. Very right real now. fears, because you can imagine Nigeria, not only the biggest economy, but the most highly populated black nation, uh, now trying. I mean, succeeding in flooding, not the markets now, but the um, public space of these countries, what it will imply to them. Let's talk about our GDP growth. I, I guess you you heard the news from the NBS on Monday, isn't it? 1.5% growth rate in the second quarter for this year. Uh, it's a growth rate, but it's a slowdown. It doesn't mean that Nigeria isn't growing, but it's growing at a slower rate, 1.5% from 1.95% uh, in the first quarter of this year. Some other sectors have shown contraction. Some have shown uh, you know, expansion like broadcasting, entertainment, ICT, and yeah. all of that. But agriculture uh, and some other sectors we're seeing, you know, what, what's your view when you saw that? I'm bleeding. Even before, in your waiting room there, I was talking to Sheyi, I was, I was crying inside. The uh, NBS announced we were out of re recession. recession. Some 
four five months ago. Mm, early this year, I guess. Four yeah. five months yeah. ago, and then the MBS, which is actually a a, a reporting uh, bureau agency, is now telling us to our face that we seem to be declining back into where we are coming from. So <laughs> I was reading on Arsenal News now. Forget that I can bring football <laughs> into this just a bit. I was reading on Arsenal News now. If that it's there football, is football, we'll, we'll <laughs> fight, we'll quarrel, but let's That there is a, a real news, yeah. there is fake news, and there is somewhere in between that is uh, the writer's opinion backed by uh, examples. So I want to believe that uh, NBS gives us uh, authentic um, data, which we didn't have like seven, eight years ago. Fantastic bureau. But then, why I said I bleed? I checked um, the uh, growth and contraction rates, especially in the non-oil export sector. I checked it and um, compared it with CIA World Factbook, which is the most authentic source of international trade information. China exported 2.3 trillion US dollars last year to the world. I looked for Nigeria on the top 50, top 70. I didn't see. So I came back to check our own figures, specifically what was Nigeria's figure. It was 44 billion US dollars. India exported 298 billion US dollars to the world. India classified as third world with Nigeria. Nigeria exported 44 billion out of which 39.1 billion was crude oil. The highest non-oil uh, export from Nigeria last year was cocoa and allied products, 238 million dollars. M dollars. But, but, but even from the rate. So yeah. GD GDP um, growth unhealthy, contracting going down. And then look at the um, sectors that you were mentioning, um, broadcasting, um, of course, mm. you still continue to give kudos to Nollywood, the entertainment, yes, entertainment industry. Music, You're talking about um, ICT, telecom uh, ICT telecommunication. Mm. Now that we're having problems with and what have you, these are sectors that are growing in spite of absence of government support and deliberate strategy in spite of, not because of. So that should give us a cause for concern. That should bring our economic manager to a level. I was asking uh, Shei, um, what do we actually use the NBS figures for? Who is the Shei here? I'm not sure. My colleagues who are sitting down <laughs> okay. uh, waiting okay. for you. Okay, so, so now, um, G uh, NBS gives us the figures of our GDP. Will somebody take that and go back into the drawing room and feel concerned about which sector is doing, well, which sector and is which doing, doing well, well and therefore come out with a fire brigade strategy to quickly correct? Or are we going to fold our hands and wait another four months for Yemi Kale and his crew to come and tell us the result of our inaction. We have been comatose. We have been inactive. We have not done any, uh, uh, I mean, shown evidence of any deliberate concern about the figures that are being no, shown to us. The administration, I wonder if they are watching you right now, they may say, oh, are you ignorant of the fact of some of the things they are doing, especially in infrastructure? Oh. Like even President Buhari was telling Theresa May yesterday, oh, you know, that there was so much money between 2009 and 2014, but now we don't have as much money as we, we used to have, but we are still concentrating now on infrastructure development. Uh, I, you may say the government is also doing stuff in agriculture and trying to complete projects that, so... You want it, to start something that we can't finish because I see your people already making eye to you. Um, are you aware of how long it takes a trailer that is uh, destined for the export market. How long it takes from Antony Village to enter Papa Port? I just talked about it on Tuesday concerning cocoa. That we can't even get our cocoa 
to the to the, to the, the sheep port, side is making cocoa prices now go up and we are the fifth largest producer of cocoa and then the nigerian exporter is now incurring a 400 percent um, increase in the overall unit cost because of just that one component of failed trade infrastructure are we so inept are we so ignorant are we so uneducated that we do not understand that it is possible to address the issue of the apapa gridlock the government, government and why they are, are we that. so fastidious about apapa what is happening to, to on port what is happening to worry port is it only to go and dump uh, um, uh, uh, what do you call it poisonous chemical have you, you know the story of cocoa what are all those i mean ko -K -O, not cocoa beans mm. what are the other inland ports being put uh, what use are they being put to the dry ports that became a very very attractive at one point what to what use are they being why is there port congestion when we have licensed um what do you call it bonded terminals these are supposed to be customs processing centers there is one in kaduna and i was discussing with somebody in the abuja chamber two days ago there can be one in every state of the federation and what this simply means is rather than have everything clogged up in apapa as soon as these things arrive they can get to the custom processing center in the state capital or in the bonded terminal nearest to them and get the job of the long room uh, the processing and all these things sorted out there therefore freeing up space for export to take place why income i mean import is being processed this is what i mean by making use of the data and information available at our disposal are we just chewing them to either beat our chest and say that we are making so much progress i was shocked to read in a uh, cia world fact book that nigeria's exports have decreased by uh, a, a little over 50 percent between 2013 and 2017. okay let's just uh, final question for you what worries you the most even as nigeria approaches 2019 elections because you're looking at the gdp figures coming out now inflation numbers also came out 11.14 percent for uh, the, uh, for the month of July, yes, uh, month of July, there's also anticipation that it might go higher as we approach the elections. So as a trade professional, what actually worries you the most concerning the trajectory that we are going right now and the political space? What worries me most is that we are, um, we are heading for another plummeting, as in real downward skyrocketing, because um, experience, past experience has shown that in an election year, approaching an election year, nobody is really concerned any longer about economic activities or growing the economy. That worries me. That tells me, I mean, that is sending a signal that unless we watch it, now that we are already shouting about it, that we should probably kind of distinguish the politics or politicking from economic or economicking. <laughs> Over so you're the talking next about politics. Months, so we should concentrate more on governance. Critical. We should look at governance. governance. We should look at moving, really, really moving us forward. At least stabilizing us until the inception of the new administration, whether it is the continuing administration or this thing, it really wouldn't matter. And of course, to beg whether it is the same administration or incoming, that continuity actually is very very key in the economic okay. development and health of nations i think we'll leave it at that i hope the politicians are listening you know because so many things to talk about the politicians the politicians the politicians they are so much interested who defected to where which interest is it everybody's globe trotting yeah. around nigeria but what matters actually is that how are Nigerians faring? That is what matters. Many thanks for joining me on the show. Thanks so much. Nancy. All right, I've been uh, speaking with uh, Lufemi Boyede, who is the chief executive of South Koinonia Ventures. He's also a certified trade, uh, international trade practitioner. We, uh, practitioner, we've been talking about the GDP numbers and the 